What's up guys? My name is Michael. I'm in the studio drinking my coffee and I just saw a video on YouTube. That video is from Profoto and in that video uh, the photographer Gregory Heisler describes how he shot a portrait and he shot a portrait of Alonzo Mourning. I hope, he, I, hope I spelled it correctly. Um, anyway, he did a really, really great setup and I'm going to link to the video in the description. And I thought I would really love to recreate that shot for a self-portrait. Yeah, I think I do have everything that he describes. I do have all the lights. I do have uh, quite some of the gels that he used. And uh, I also do have a blue background, which you can see right there here's the blue background yeah i need to take it off put it on the wall uh set everything up i'm gonna see if i can recreate that uh that look that he created i'm gonna film this on the fuji x h1 and i'm gonna photograph this with my phase one iq 180 which is a 80 megapixel camera and i'm gonna shoot it one more time with the Fuji so that we can compare the image quality between these two cameras. It's gonna be pretty exciting. Let's go and do it. Honestly guys, creating this light setup was quite a challenge and to be honest it doesn't look exactly the same but it is close enough and I really like this look. I think the problem is that I don't have exactly this red kind of gel that um, he used and I don't really care. I got a great image, a great look and I'm gonna take some more photos right now. Maybe fine-tune the, the image a little bit and uh, shoot with the X-T2 because I got the X-T2 right here. I'm gonna shoot with my cell phone Wi-Fi remote. I'm filming on the X-H1 and after I got the image with the X-T2, I'm gonna shoot with my Face 1. And then we're gonna go to Lightroom and check out the images. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. Oh, and by the way, um, I'm lighting this with my brown color uh, studio equipment. With this, I have set up one, two background lights with the, with the gels on it. This is difficult. Here and here. These two, they have the gels on them. Then I have the main light, which is right here with the blue gel. And then I have another light that is now on the floor which has a green gel so everything is colors and that's how I created this moody mood this colorful <laughs> this colorful image all right fine tuning shooting some more images Lightroom <laughs> Okay, so the images with the X-T2 are done. And it was pretty easy because I could use my phone as a monitor to see what I'm doing and to hit the shutter. And I do like the light setup a lot. As you can see, I changed because I decided that, hold on, because I decided that for this lighting setup, it would look 
awesome in my training outfit. And since I'm doing Freeletics training for five weeks now, uh, yeah, it was a great way to create some images for myself. And yeah, what I'll do now is I'll create some images with the phase one, which I have right here. You see this monster, monster camera? Ah, I love this camera. This camera has uh, an 80 megapixel sensor. Let me, show, let me just show you that sensor real quick. It's, it's so amazing, look at that. That's the 80 megapixel sensor, it goes right back on the camera. This camera shoots at ISO 35. So I was on F11 right here. So I'll be around F uh, 5.6 probably for this one. So the depth of field is gonna be pretty shallow. I have the 80 mil on here, F 2.8. Yeah, it's gonna be much more difficult. I'm gonna shoot tethered to the computer so I can see the shots that I'll do. Focus is gonna be difficult, so I need to sit on a chair to be able to get focus where I need it to be. Probably I will I will choose F8 because I know this lens performs best at F8 and then I'll adjust my studio light to give me the light that I need. Well, after that, I'm going to show you what 80 megapixels mean and we're going to discuss some of the images. Let's go. with the images I think <laughs> but the studio is a total mess look at that I, I have set up so many lights I've changed all the settings in my uh, brown color lighting equipment <laughs> my Apple watch recognizes this photo shoot as a training awesome <laughs> yeah um, it wasn't a real workout, but it was quite some work. Um, probably, I'm gonna play with the images in Lightroom today. Do a little post-production, find out which images are the best. And tomorrow, I'm gonna guide you through what I did and do a little voiceover. This all needs to be cleaned up today. It's past 7 p.m. And I got a customer tomorrow for portrait shooting in which we're gonna need a completely different light setup. I will need to clean up my studio, get something to eat. Pretty excited about the images. My goal was initially to copy the lighting setup from Gregory Heisler. And I think I got pretty close in some shots and then I changed the lighting. I skipped the main light, I turned it off because I thought it would give me a much more interesting look but i'm still pretty sure you enjoyed this little photo session with me uh, make sure to check out gregory heisler's video because it's really interesting and this guy also has a lot to say all right guys we are now in lightroom where i have the images that i shot on the xt2 and i must apologize if things might be a little slow because my computer does now have to do because my computer now needs to handle a screen recording audio recording lightroom and capture one all at once so let's open <coughs> so let's open one of my favorite images from the xt2 which is this one now this image is uncropped, but not unedited. Let me show you the original version that came out of the camera. 
it looks like this. So it's pretty flat, which is normal because it's a raw file. Now let me share with you the settings that I used. I shot this one on the 35 at f11, ISO 200. Um, now the look that I created for this image is okay, but it still doesn't have the punch and the intense colors that I would like to have. So what I did is I just played around a little bit with the exposure, but mainly it's contrast. And what I also did is I chose another camera profile, which you can find right here, and I chose Modern One. So if I would go with the uh, standard Adobe color, it would look much more like this, which is also pretty nice. Let's, let's keep it like that, just for the moment. Um, and let's check out the details on this image. So let's go right into here. And right now we're on 100%. But we can still enlarge a little bit, two by one. This is 200%. You can see now the image starts to fall apart, which is okay because this is just standard 24 megapixel. This is what you would expect. It's fine. So let's go to the other image in which I'm a little bit closer. And let's do the same thing here. We're gonna use the standard Adobe profile. And I'll show you the settings right here. I increased some clarity, uh, exposure and contrast and, and that's all. Everything else is on standard. So I still love the look of the image and this is the way it looks without any adjustments. And let's go ahead and check the details on this one. This is 100%. Uh, by the way, this one was shot on the 56, also at f11. You can see the quality is, seems to be, <laughs> it seems to be a little better, but when we compare the images, these, uh, this one, which was shot on the 56, is a little closer. So when you check out the 100% uh, magnification, it appears to be sharper, which it isn't. So we're here now at 300% magnification. And you can still see some details in the eyes, which is beautiful. Now, of course, I shot quite some more images. Let me show you. In the beginning, I shot some test images and then I, when I was happy with the light, uh, I changed my clothes and then I shot some, some more images. And yeah, I took a total of 428, but these are raw and JPEG, so 200 images, it's fine. And then I went over to the phase one. Now let's go into capture one where I processed my raw images from the phase one camera and keep that image open for comparison, maybe in a zoom range like that. Well, I'm gonna let the image load so that we can compare the quality and I know it's a, a totally unfair comparison because these cameras and sensors, it just, you just can't compare them because, uh, I mean, the price tag is totally different and uh, the weight and size of the camera is totally different. But I think it's totally interesting to see uh, what different camera systems are capable of. And that's a good test for that because in a studio you have a controlled environment where you can test things like that. Very good. So let's look at this thumbnail right here and you can see this is almost the same image and I tried hard to recreate uh, a comparable image. So this is about length, uh, the, the size it goes down to the elbow and this one as well and there's not a lot of space above the head as well. So 
these are pretty comparable. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that the tones are much smoother. And the second thing that, I'll, that I noticed is, and you will see that as well, when I zoom in here, and we get in the same area, we go to the eye. Look at that detail. Let's go back. This is, this is the XT2, and that's the phase one. Now I know this camera has a much bigger sensor and it has way more resolution. And that, that's why it has to look a lot better, <laughs> of course. But it's, it's always shocking to me how much detail I can get out of this camera whenever I take it out of my bag and do something with it. Um, you can see the settings right here. As I told you, it is shot on ISO 35, one hundredth of a second. I could have gone lower than that. F8. Let's go back out. Now, once you print an image with that resolution, you're gonna freak out. Oh, let me show you the detail in the in the fabric down there. Look at that. Man, that's crazy. I mean. You get to retouch things you have never seen before. Not on a camera and not in real life. I mean, you can see the structure of the fabric right here. And that's just a smooth surface. Now, later on, I played a little bit more with the lighting. And I turned off the main light. And when I turn off the main light, which had the blue gel, the, the beauty dish that came from the front, then it looks like that. I also like the framing of this shot. I don't know why it seems a little bit weird, but I liked it. And um, again, just for the fun of it, you can see at F8, the depth of field is really small. Oh, it seems I do have a little dust on my sensor. But once we get into the area where the focus lies, you can see the amount of detail that you get. I mean, the focus is not perfect. It's a little bit too, too far behind, but it's fine still. This eye is not really in focus, but this one. So let's go back out. I really like the mood of this image. And one of my favorite shots as well is this one, because here you can also see really well the lighting that came from below with the green gel. And uh, it really reflects really good in the eyes as well. So this looks a little more dramatic to me. And you can see we're here on 200%. And if I, even if I go to 400, it still doesn't look bad. It doesn't, it doesn't look like 400%. It looks more like maybe 200. You can see there is so much detail in there. Let's go, let's go up here in the, in the here. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much I'm happy with the outcome. I like the colors. I like the, the mood of the images. And yeah, maybe this one as well. Also a great image. Um, it's pretty hard to do it with the phase one because um, you only get one focus focus point. And this focus point is in the middle. And um, yeah, you need to shoot tethered on the computer in order to see what you're doing. Um, although this camera has a pretty big uh, screen on its back, but uh, if you're doing selfies, you cannot see anything. Anyway, guys, that's it for the computer session. Let's go back on camera. I'm always blown away by the details I get out of this camera and this huge sensor. But for daily use, it's just not practical because these files are so big and the camera is so big and everything. Um, but that being said, whenever I use it and whenever I see an image that I shot with that camera in an exhibition, oh my god, in a print, it's so amazing. You can almost 
dive into the picture and you feel the structure of everything and the details are just so, so much clearer. And I'm pretty sure Fuji also does a great job on the GFX camera, but I didn't have a chance to test one of these and I'm pretty sure when they come out with their 100 megapixel GFX, I might switch from my phase one that was right here. It's now at the charging station. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna switch from my phase one to the Fuji GFX, whatever it's gonna be called. I don't care, but yeah, I think it's gonna have a much greater usability than the phase one does. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna handle um, higher ISOs much better than my phase one sensor, which is rated at ISO 35. And that makes it a studio or tripod camera. Of course you can increase the ISO, but well, you shouldn't like with every camera, you want the best that you can. Anyway, guys, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. And probably I'm going to do another video on the phase one whenever I find time. Thanks for watching. See you. Goodbye.